I absolutely love desserts. Not just to eat, I mean to smell, to look at, to create. Imagine this, you're taking your time just walking through the city streets, lined with like various shops along the way. You're accompanied by pouring rain and a parade of umbrellas. You spot me soaked, umbrellaless, and frozen there barreling my eyes through one of the store windows. To your surprise, I'm not staring at some materialistic, limited edition, what have you. Nope, I'm caught up on this bakery's everyday, chocolate infused, six strand, golden holla. While I get that's not necessarily a dessert, my imagination has gone what I can do with this bread. But I think it's safe to say a Boston cream donut isn't necessarily breakfast either. Even with all that said, believe it or not, I still only eat dessert one time a week. <laughs> but these two desserts, I wouldn't have an issue incorporating into the diet more frequently. Starting with the black bean brownies, I promise you, not as disgusting as they sound. Don't get me wrong, this doesn't taste like you're same brownie that's birthed from flour and has loads of sugar in it created by some fairy godmother called Betty Crocker. But it doesn't taste beany. Matter of fact, let me say this. This black bean brownie was created to outsmart your average brownie. It's oil-free, flour-free, therefore it's gluten-free, high protein, in respects to a brownie and can also be refined sugar-free if that's what you're into. Before starting this recipe, I actually like to get my black beans completely dry. Any excess water may cause your brownies to be more moist. Therefore, you might have a fudgier brownie, which some may like. We're choosing to use Dutch processed cocoa powder here. That's gonna help minimize the bitterness in the recipe. Therefore, it also helps us minimize the excess sugar we might want in order to make it sweet. I choose to use almond butter in the recipe because you know, I like the taste of it. I definitely don't see you going wrong if you go with like a peanut butter or something more neutral, like maybe like a cashew butter. If dodging the nut butters, my next primary option would be literally a seed butter. I mentioned earlier, this can be refined sugar-free. I add a extra two tablespoons of brown sugar into the recipe just to have a bit of familiar taste for myself. That can be replaced with two extra tablespoons of maple syrup and or just leaving it out completely. Keep in mind, the chocolate chips would be a consideration around refined sugars as well. If you're looking to hack the protein in this with more natural, maybe not like added protein, like uh, protein powder, what you could do is add some, you know, chopped nuts or something in that nature right at the top and you know, you're, you're gonna add three, four, even five extra grams in there. And sometimes I actually add like a little bit of granola on top of my brownies. Not ideal, but so good. I used to eat high protein desserts to overcome like a urge or craving that I had at the time. I imagine if you are like super into fitness and or, you know, maybe you're just at a place in your life where meeting a certain protein threshold is really important to you. This is one of the recipes I think would be a good recommendation on what you could do last minute to really get there. Thank you. 
Did you see how I put that in a pre-made pie crust? Not my biggest recommendation if you are using this as like a healthy-ish dessert. My recommendation here would be to completely get rid of any edible housing, treat it like a pudding or like a dessert ganache. Split it up into like little cups or small bowls and you can eat it like a more generous serving size of those restaurant samplers. I'm pretty sure I didn't get a chance to show you the inside of that pie. Let me do that. So hopefully you can see that a bit, but the pie is kind of like a mousse texture. Very velvet, almost like a, a cheesecake, if you will. Probably not on the first one, but one like this, you could certainly add like, say, a, a scoop of protein powder in there and straight boost up that, you know, protein value in there. We're using silk and tofu as basically our base. I have it myself, but I have witnessed the pie be made with multiple variations of tofu. One common denominator between all of those variations is a high-speed blender. My mom has this saying, and uh, it goes, you can't make blood out of stone. My whole life, that has been true. But a high-speed blender can make liquid out of some pretty serious solids. I'm just saying. I haven't said that to her face. So I do expect a good lump in the arm the next time she sees me. Raw cashews I'm choosing for its neutral flavor, but also for its natural creaminess. Now you could go with like a different nut butter or seed butter rather than going with its solid form in order to create this pie. I also use espresso powder, which I'm looking to deepen the flavor in the pie. It's optional, but if you haven't tried using espresso powder to enhance chocolate flavor, Give it a try. I mainly do it when I have desserts that are going to be like frozen or eaten cold, simply because things that are sweet just taste milder as they're cold rather than if they were warm. But ultimately that espresso trick works regardless. On a side note, I was thinking about some of the questions I get sometimes. There's often confusion or maybe just, you know, a little need for further understanding around the importance of protein in a plant-based and or vegan diet. Not right away, but I'll make a video that may not be recipe focused, but would help give insight and or, you know, just some food for thought. Today's recipes are linked in the description or you could find it right over at makeitdairyfree.com. If desserts aren't your thing, then check out one of my other videos where I do high protein breakfasts and or high protein dinners. I thank you so much for tuning in and until next time, believe in good. Peace.